it's just going to come in late, I think. I guess we're not voting on anything tonight. No, it's work sessions. The big thing is, over the years, we've done experiments. And the guys go. Yeah. So is your life crazy too? <laughs> the shit's like in the fan this week. <laughs> People are resigning jobs and it's just like... It has been a mess. Mm -hmm. Ugly start to the week at 4.30. Eric, are we hooked up on the phone then? Okay, good. We're ready when you are. Yep, Rich. Okay, guys, we're gonna get, go ahead and get this started. Um, you're gonna let me know if someone phones in. Okay, thank you, Eric. Um, we'll get this started. The City Council Work Session Agenda, May 27th, 2020, 4:30 p.m. Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Uh, this will be for the August 3rd, 2020 meeting. Uh, I will tell anybody that is streaming online, we've got kind of a flex schedule because um, Mr. Rinker has uh, been called away for a, an emergency and uh, uh, Mr. Kreitzer is, is, coming, is coming in late from work, so real life gets in the way. But, so what we're going to do with the group that's here to present, we will interject you somewhere in the middle of this once I get the fourth uh, member here. So it, anyway, follow along as best you can. Uh, first up is a public hearing consideration of sale of Lot 1 and Park View Subdivision, 713 Shuckacon Drive, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Mr. Tisley. This is the remaining and final lot that we have for sale uh, there at the Park View Subdivision on Shuckacon Drive, just uh, south of uh, Dankwer Park. Um, Similar offer as before, um, MJ Daly Construction has uh, submitted an offer to purchase this lot uh, for $25,000. Uh, they are bound by the covenants like the other two lots, uh, having a minimum uh, house size attached to car garage um, and driveway to the lot, and then a time frame to start construction and complete construction. Um, lot three is uh, moving along very nicely. Uh, lots one and two would offer for a walkout basement, so maybe a little... Uh, different construction for that, but um, we're happy to see another bid on it, so. Good deal. Uh, anybody have any questions? No? Uh, next up is public hearing consideration of a sale of proper property locally known as 1116 Spring Street, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. I have got cotton out there. Is this is a sale of property that's been Property the city acquired uh, through the owner um, had been abandoned for quite some time in terrible condition, uh, really uh, uh, essentially abandoned and uh, derelict. Uh, it was demolished uh, this spring, um, and we have received a bid from both uh, property owners to the east and west, and um, so I guess within the resolution it's uh, offering to uh, split the lot in half. I believe it's a 60-foot lot, so each uh, half uh, there on the east and west would get an additional 30 feet, um, allow a little more yard space for the property to the west, and uh, allow a driveway for the property to the east, uh, which would benefit both of them. So. All right. Any questions there, gang? Good job. Number three is public hearing, consideration of plans and specifications for the 2020 Walnut Street Combined Sewer Repair Project, Manhole 86J12. Hi, Mr. McGregor. Good evening. <clears throat> In front of you, well, uh, it's plans and specifications for the manhole. Uh, this area is in a combined uh, system. Uh, so in front of you is the, the manhole that uh, we'll be replacing and fixing. Uh, it is two storm intakes in attached to it. Uh, we originally were just going to draw this up and quote it, but after Jesse estimated it, it went over the bidding thresholds, so we need to bring the plans and specs in front of you. Uh, if you would hit the next slide, it just gives you an image. There's really nothing exciting about a manhole other than the fact when they're broken and uh, have problems, you need to try and replace it. So what you see is some of the bricks are falling apart and the intake, uh, the storm line coming in. Uh, is starting to wear away. It's not an emergency, but it is something that we need to deal with. It's not something that was budgeted. Uh, it is something that we would take out of the sewer funds, the miscellaneous uh, project category. Uh, the estimate on this project is 65,000. 
Uh, I don't think we'll probably end up at that number, um, but using some of the local bidding that we've had lately, uh, that's kind of where we're at for an estimate. So okay. I can answer any questions on it. I know I don't have a lot of detail on it, but uh, we're essentially going to drop in a, a typical manhole, run some storm intakes, and then a culvert across. So. Uh, not a lot of, of details to, to really bring in front of you. Other so you don't see anything that might cause other problems as you're doing it? Sometimes you can see that. But. Um, <clears throat> not really. Uh, we, the, the, the street, Walnuts, is in, is in pretty bad shape. The intersection is seal coat. We will probably bring that back and put it in concrete <coughs> uh, to help with some of the flow. Some of the damage in that area is from ponding water. It's pretty flat throughout there. Um, and so we're, we'll bring some new storm intakes in there as well. Okay. Questions? Good. All right. Uh, next up is a resolution providing a salary adjustment for the city manager. Mr. Furneaux. It's usually Stephanie that gets to do this. She's on vaca vacation this week. Uh, okay. So you have done your review of me. Uh, you didn't fire me. Uh, so annually, we get to go through this process. Everyone else has been taken care of either through union contracts or the non-union personnel manual. Uh, this is uh, resolution has been brought forward after through Stephanie after consultation with you yes. uh, for an annual adjustment that would reflect a comparable amount to what's in the union contract and what was in the non-union personnel manual for an increase. Okay. Questions? No. Thank you, Jim. All right, then uh, moving on to the proposed consent agenda. Uh, first one up is a resolution approving a refund of beer license for 2JR Pizza Enterprises LLC doing business as Pizza Hut. Anything on that? No? Uh, resolution approving nuisance abatements of various properties. Did you guys see anything stand out on that? Mow your grass, people. Uh, Resolution of uh, approving purchase of irrigation pedestals for Flint Hills Golf Course. Mr. Tislin. You have a memo in your packet. Uh, we have an irrigation system at the golf course. Uh, we had a pedestal uh, budgeted for this year in the CIP for replacement. Mm -hmm. um, There's something where uh, we've tried to phase in replacement of the irrigation pedestals, those control the irrigation at the golf course. Um, it was something we uh, really needed, uh, especially for uh, holes uh, 12 and 13. Uh, those are basically going on water uh, based on the uh, deterioration of the existing irrigation system. Uh, we've had John Deere historically. Those are no longer uh, operating as a uh, irrigation system for golf courses, uh, so they are no longer serviceable as well. So we've been replacing with uh, Toro uh, as seen here. Um, so we uh, have a order in uh, for one pedestal at uh, $4,300. Um, Looking at our existing pedestals, they're not able to be operated other than their current system, which is a 20-minute system, which isn't uh, really effective. Uh, we'd like to substitute. Uh, we had a more reels in the CIP uh, for $13,500. We'd like to substitute the completion of the irrigation system, uh, purchase three additional pedestals so that we're all on the Toro system that can be operated uh, remotely through uh, a smartphone or uh, online uh, so that Ted doesn't have to come in, actually manually turn it on or off or uh, do something with that so we can be a little more efficient with our staff time and as well as uh, uh, watering the course. Um, that would take away the reels uh, with that and with the purchase of the existing one, we'd be about 1,900 short. Um, we'd like to uh, utilize state sales tax uh, fund balance for that um, and move forward with that purchase. Um, field is something that is uh, needed for the quality of the course and if irrigation goes away it really deteriorates the course especially in a time like this where we don't have much rain until recently in uh, hot conditions. So. so the more reels probably come back next year you think? But yeah it'd be something we'd push out for a year um, try and make do with what we have and see if we can program those in next year. 
Sounds but pretty slick. Alexa, water my golf course. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly the irrigation is uh, more critical. We'd like them both, but realize there are things we have to sacrifice. Well, once you lose the grass, you've lost it yeah. all. So. Yeah. Yep. Any questions on that game? How many of those do you need for the whole course? Then? We have five for the whole course. Uh, spread throughout the course, There's uh, these are 48 station, the three that we'd like to buy. So each station is a irrigation head. Um, the one we already ordered was a 32. That's kind of back in the corner uh, where there's uh, fewer irrigation heads, but uh, it's five spread throughout the course. So that would, so that would mean we'd have one left to replace No, that'd point. be, we oh, replaced would, one previously. I got gotcha. you. Um, so I we have one Toro currently, we have one Toro on order, and then we have three existing, so. Okay. Any questions, Dan? All right. Uh, number five, resolution approving the 2020 COPS hiring program agreement between the City of Burlington and the U.S. Department of Justice Office of the Community Oriented Policing Services Chief. Oh, is that number four? Oh, I'm sorry. I went out. Of, I went out. You can go ahead. I already announced it. I just screwed up. I thought you were skipping up to me, but um, we had talked about this. I came and presented the last uh, work session. I don't think uh, the city manager was here, uh, but it's the same presentation, <clears throat> the same presentation of the same grant funds that we had talked about uh, the last work session before the previous council meeting. So if you have any questions about that or anything else, uh, this is just a resolution for okay. that. All right. Do you have any questions, guys? No? Jim. Now, after I get, oh, Jim, go ahead. He's coming up. I did just want to talk about uh, the financing on this. Uh, this isn't a budgeted position. Uh, this next year we're looking to, I mean, we're just getting started. But we're uh, right now with uh, revenues off, we're probably a, a couple hundred thousand off uh, for what we would, uh, off of a balanced budget for this next year. Right now I'm showing 250,000 deficit. Uh, now we're going to try to offset a portion of that. Um, one thing that we have now, Eric isn't really excited about it, but he's got a planning position. Catherine uh, Gerst uh, just uh, left and is going to a job in another place. And I know you're looking to hire, and hopefully you're able to. You're wanting to get that done fairly quickly, if at all possible. The last couple of times that's been a nine-month ordeal, waiting. Uh, if it was this time, that would certainly help. I mean, we do have a we have a budget gap this mm. year. Um, I don't know if you're able to get it filled sooner than that, and you'll have to push on it if you can, because I mean, we do have a couple of hundred thousand dollar hole. Um, I know that this is something that if you do accept, you could push off into the f the next year for when you brought that person on July. to July. the right. following July, which would help this. I mean that takes it out of this this budget year that we're currently in as being an issue. Uh, but we're still uh, in a close to a $200,000. As I look into the, the following year, right now, I'm looking at about a $200,000 deficit still that following year. We have a lot of revenues that come back. But one of the funding sources that we have this year that we won't have next year. Uh, we are receiving about $45,000 yet this year for the a fire department position uh, that this the last couple of months here for funding on that 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 funding goes away and we still have that position to cover with no revenues to 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 offset it so even though we do have some revenues that will be coming back this next year uh, I know that there's a, a potential issue there okay. uh, if you take this on you're taking an added position at a time where we are still at a we're, we're, I'm, I'm hopeful next year that we can get back to where our revenues were last year yeah. on a lot of things. So uh, you're, you're going to create a spot where as we hit this budget cycle this next year, you're looking for ways to either raise uh, taxes or raise some other revenue source or make some additional cuts. And when you figure that our general fund is about 80% personnel, that means making an offsetting personnel a choice somewhere else as part of this right. anyway that's where it stands where I look at it right now and this is when you're doing funding for some a position that is a year out that's we're we're so far out that it's it's hard to know how to 
to, to project out to there, but if we're move, just looking at what moves forward, I don't see the funding source to make this work. Okay. Yeah, yeah But I also understand that you're very much in favor and, and I got you. Yeah, so. Well, before Jim leaves, does that, does anybody have any questions on that? So what, what Jim's saying there, because we could, we can push it to 2022, but once we accept it though, and then if we say we can't do it, that makes us So if you, if you take the, the funding and you delay the position hiring, uh, now you're having to get that accomplished. Uh, if you're trying not to impact emergency services in the general fund, emergency services is over 60% of the general fund. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you're you're if you're not taking it out of here, you're taking it out of one of a fairly limited number of other areas. Probably library or somewhere in barracks or city hall functions. I mean, it's really the three primary areas that you can make an offset. Okay. Uh, now back to you, Eric, on the resolution of authorizing filing for an application for resource enhancement and protection REAP program for construction and improvements of the Flint River Trail. So we've been before you a couple times on this. Uh, we applied for a state recreation uh, trail funding uh, grant uh, just a couple months ago. Uh, this is the last remaining portion, the portion in red here. Uh, it's kind of blown up here on the bottom uh, from Cash Street to just uh, north of uh, former Lamont uh, property there. Um, that's the only gap remaining between uh, the city limits on uh, Tamer Road and on Mill Dam Road and the riverfront area. Um, so we're trying to combine as many funds as we can. Uh, we have uh, approximately 30,000 in TAP funding available for it, but that does require a match. Uh, so we applied for a Walmart Foundation small match, uh, which was anticipated in end of August, uh, and also applied for state rec funds, and then these REAP funds, which are uh, we, based on our population size, we qualify for our, up to 150,000. REAP does not require a match itself, but can be used for federal uh, match. That's the good thing for it. Uh, we've received, I think, three or four different REAP grants for this trail in the past, so we've been successful and hope to be successful again. Uh, but again, uh, we qualify for 150,000, and there's no local match for this grant, but it could be used as a match for others. And, uh, again, just trying to complete that last portion of the Flint River Trail and Bluff Road. Okay. Questions? None? All right. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Jim, I'm going to go back to the to the cops hiring program. I would like to take that off the consent and discuss it one more time. Okay. Okay. Is that all right with you guys? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, number six, uh, resolution approving agreement with H.R. Green, Inc. of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, for professional services for the Burlington, Iowa Wastewater Treatment Facilities, Influent Line Rehabilitation Phase 1, Mr. Fitting. Welcome. Okay, uh, the plant is uh, went online in July of 82. Um, we have a combined sewer system, a lot of uh, sand and grit type materials gets carried to the plant during high. Uh, flow uh, events, rain, snow melt, uh, that material is very abrasive and uh, it enters the plant through a cement line, spiral rolled, welded steel influent pipe and that pipe sprung a leak here uh, a couple months back. Uh, one of the welds, water started to drip out of it. Um, we were able to put a band band-aid if you will <laughs> to stop the leak but it's very very concerning to us uh, because of the age and because of the type of material it sees um, so we feel that uh, we need to inspect that line um, we're also very concerned about the two concrete structures that which precedes it our plant influent well and a distribution well on the downstream side of this section of pipe. In order to get a look at these structures in the pipe, we're gonna to have to go to a complete bypass or most of the wastewater coming to the plant will have to be bypassed to the Mississippi River. Um, we uh, propose to uh, hire HR Green to uh, help us evaluate the condition of the line and to correct the issues that we have with the pipe 
and probably with the concrete structures. Um, they, uh, while uh, doing this project for us, and this again is just the evaluation and come up with some concepts of how to proceed, uh, they're also going to be evaluating a T, a fitting, if you will, that's on the influent line that could be converted to a place where we could hook up some pumps, which could then be used during the actual repair uh, remediation of this issue to maybe bypass the area that we're working and pump it into the plant downstream of that location. Uh, so that's going to also be one of their things that they're going to be doing for us under this contract, proposed contract, as well as uh, actually the headworks is somewhat of a bottleneck there. Um, we can actually probably treat somewhere between three and four million gallons more a day if we could just get the water past to this bottleneck, which is at the headworks. Um, they're going to put together some concepts for us too at the same time we're doing this evaluation, which would be beneficial for the city as we continue to work on um, our consent agreement with the state and uh, considering sewer improvements, equalization tanks, uh, getting more water through the plant. And so there's a number of things that are involved, but the focus is the rehab of the plant influent line and also looking at these two concrete structures. Uh, they're proposing, the agreement, proposed agreements for a lump sum of $15,300. Again, that's for phase one. Once we get the concepts and make our decisions on what we're going to do, that's another entire different ball mm -hmm. game. Hmm, uh, questions? Um, so this is outside our normal agreement with them, obviously. Yes, because it's it is. New. Okay, just wanted to get that. And it is uh, proposed to be paid for from the sewer fund. Okay. Jim, did you have something to add? I see you coming up. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I did just want to note, plant, the plant capacity now max wet weather is 23 million gallons a day, something like that? 20.8 right now. 20.8, so if you add three to four million more, uh, our peak flow through our system is well over 40 million between the different areas. Uh, so we, we have a, a good 20, 20 million ga gallon per day gap in our ability to treat that we're seeing overflows in certain wet weather events. Uh, this has the potential to have a fairly cheap uh, fix along with the repair that's that we're evaluating that I see as a big big deal for uh, helping us as he's mentioned with uh, with our peak weather events uh, it's hard to put those into perspective when you when he says three to four million gallons uh, it's those are big numbers but I don't know if you had anything else but did want to point that out you want your paper I, I, I <laughs> I appreciate bringing that up. I guess I forgot that you were 40 million peaks, so that uh, fixing that bottleneck would go a long ways. There's a potential to potential. get a pretty big bang for our the buck bottom. if we can do those improvements there at the headworks, as opposed to doing something out in the collection mm -hmm. system with equalization tanks and that type gotcha. of thing. So. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, any questions on that? No. Looks like we're moving ahead as number seven. It's you again, Don, resolution approving agreement with HR Green, Inc. of Cedar Rapids for professional services for Burlington, Iowa, wastewater treatment facilities, National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, NPDES permit renewal. The uh, having a wastewater collection system, a wastewater treatment plant, treating the water, discharging it to the receiving stream, in this case being the Mississippi River, the city is required to have an NPDES permit, which is issued the city by the state. And uh, every five years, it has to be uh, renewed. Um, and we're approaching that time where our current permit uh, will expire. It expires in May uh, 31 of 2021. And we have to have a renewal application submitted to the state no later than this December 2nd of this calendar year. Um, it's quite a commitment in both time and resources to complete 
that application. And I'm uh, asking, I'm seeking outside help to complete this application. It's very important that we get this thing assembled and uh, re ready to go. Um, I'm asking to use HR Green once again. I've listed in the council item memo all the different uh, aspects that the HR Green has been involved with with the plant over the year. They've dealt with the plant. They've done, dealt with the sewer master plan for the city, so they're familiar with the collection system. Uh, they've dealt with uh, our local limits, which are used to uh, regulate our local users our industries in particular on the types of things they can discharge so what enters the sewer is not harmful to the workers in the sewers it's not harmful to the sewers it's not harmful to the biological process it doesn't pass through the plant and go out and harm the receiving stream it doesn't end up being harmful in our biosolids which we land apply they helped us put together in our most recent update of our local limits. So I feel that they're uniquely qualified to help us, help me uh, get this uh, permit renewal application assembled in a timely manner. And once it is done, then it needs to be turned over to Public Works. They're working with outside entities in regards to that consent agreement that is incorporated into our NPDES permit. So that will be somehow incorporated with our submittal to the state for their review and ultimate renewal of our permit. So I am looking for help, outside help this time around. Um, and uh, HR, I asked HR Green to put together a proposal. Uh, they did, it's uh, part of the packet and uh, they will provide that help for a not to exceed fee of $13,900. Uh, they will be billing us as uh, time and materials. Okay. And that's to be paid out of the sewer fund because it's not- Yes, that, that, too, that, that too would come out of the sewer fund. Okay. Questions, guys? Jim, did you have anything to add? So I would just say NPDES, it's essentially the state's permit to us authorizing us to operate the sewer treatment plant. They do it every five years. Each five year round, they put, when they do uh, give us or issue a permit to us, it puts stipulations on what you have to do for how you treat, do business. Uh, it is very important that we use, this is really our chance as we've been, as he mentioned, working with Public Works, uh, we have an outside law firm that we've worked with. We've worked with uh, VNK Engineering as well. This is our chance to kind of frame how we want to see what happens over the next, specifically the next five years, but mm -hmm. in the context of where we want to see the system going in the next 40 years. Right. So we have to make sure that we get the different pieces all coordinated. It's, it, there are a lot of moving pieces. Uh, you had to do your nitrate and phosphate uh, removal uh, look. You had to do testing and then put up what's your, what is the potential to reduce those. Well, we have to now say as framework as on that part, what do we want to, when do we want to see that occur? Uh, the state had initially been wanting to see us do that potentially this next five years. Uh, we're going to be making a pitch for why we want to see that occur further down the line. But all these different things, that there are a lot of moving components into operating the sewer system. And the, we get, that's, that's where we need someone from the outside to, to do this. It's well worth the money to make sure that we get all the pieces coordinated. I totally understand. We want to get that extension, too. It goes a long way. So I don't have any other questions, you guys. Thank you, Don. Good. Okay, next up, Treasurer's Report. Annette, please. So in your packet was June's treasures report. It is very preliminary. So there's, I'll be making entries all of this month and through the end of August before we really know where we're going to end up. I mean, okay. there's nothing on here that seems like it's really going to be 
detrimental or anything to our fund balances. So, like I said, I, I accrue receipts back for 60 days, expenditures. So it's just a, it'll get better each month. I'll, re, I'll bring June's in okay. with, the ne, with the next month. So you'll get two treasurer's reports for a few months till our audit report is issued. All right. Okay. Yep, prelim. Yep. Got it. No panic yet. <laughs> yes. No. Okay. All right. Questions? No? <laughs> Thanks, Annette. You're welcome. Uh, is Mr. Zeiser calling in? Do you know Eric? Or okay, so we'll we'll move past that. I haven't seen him. Uh, next up, after a, a, a long, long wait, Friends of Cascade Bridge is here to make a presentation. Uh, for the record, uh, Dwight Mulch, 231 South Third Street, uh, and I'm here on behalf of uh, the Friends of the Cascade Bridge, and as just a concerned citizen uh, who owns property here in Burlington. Uh, along with that, uh, behind me is Lisa Walsh, and the guy in the green shirt is not Terry Arleano, it's Charlie Walsh, and so they are uh, part of my, uh, part of the group as well, and may make some comments. And Terry's, and Terry's over here, I believe. Oh, you are here. I'm sorry, Terry, I That's didn't okay. see you sneak in. <laughs> and I guess you didn't sneak in, I was talking. All right, I apologize, so thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Um, our goal tonight is I'm going to talk on maybe a 30,000 foot level, but I'm going to bring it down to where we think we, as, um, as the friends of the Cascade Bridge are right now with our concern of what's going to happen to that bridge. But our goal is to ask the city council to approve forming a joint committee between citizens of our community, and that may be even beyond uh, Burlington citizens, uh, appropriate organizations and city staff to thoroughly develop a plan for either the rebuilding of the current bridge, Cascade Bridge, or build a new pedestrian vehicle bridge at the site of the current bridge. So that's what I, our goal tonight is. Now I'd like to at least give you a little bit of a viewpoint, and again, I'm speaking on behalf of the Cascade Bridge Committee, or uh, Friends of the Cascade. Um, in the end, we'd like to secure the majority approval to renovate or build this bridge in more of a timely manner than probably what has been presented uh, at this point uh, in conversations that we've had. Uh, with that said, we are very conscious of the current situation of revenue issues that have happened because of COVID-19 and other things of our community. So we are not here uh, saying, do it tomorrow, okay? Even though we'd all like that, I think. What we believe the city can gain by forming this committee is extra resources by utilizing the appropriate citizens and organizations that would assist us in securing revenue streams that are probably outside the current city sources. And by all means, none of us on the committee understand the financial uh, intricate works of trying to do private citizen, other uh, revenue streams besides tax revenue and federal government, state government, local government uh, taxes. But we'd like to at least be uh, able to take a look at what the different sources are out there to come up with the revenues to build this bridge quicker or renovate. And then when I, uh, a little bit of this viewpoint comes from when I think of the past community projects that we've done and funded from the citizens and the, and the community as a whole and in the city, uh, you know, I'm, I get pretty proud of certain things, especially anywhere from the small little uh, citizen's input of we're going to save that curly slide out at, uh, uh, out at the uh, park to uh, the renovation of the Capitol Theater. That was, I know for a fact, I was part of that. That was jointly with the city, and we needed the city's assistance to get that done. The recplex, uh, the police station, uh, uh, and, and for the depot. And for me, one of the big things when I bring people into the community and I have customers and clients who come in and entertain them, uh, one of the things, things I always do in my 30-minute tour of Burlington, besides going down Snake Alley and explaining to them that that's the crookedest street in the United States, 
uh, is uh, the crown jewel of what I consider the library. And if some of you remember, that was a struggle and a pull, but it ended up being a joint effort between citizens that wanted that library and the city. And I think that might be the same avenue of aspect of how we show up and get this Cascade Bridge uh, uh, bridge in place. Uh, currently, to speak about the uh, uh, working bridges uh, 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 survey that was done or, or report that was done, currently local citizens, and I really want to make this a point, already local citizens have contributed money and paid for that study out of their own pockets. So I think you can tell that there is a real passion on at least a portion of our community to see that we do something with a bridge. And I think that we all ought to take a lesson out of that. When you have people already showing up and saying, all right, I'll put money in and let's get something going here, whether you agree or you disagree with the findings, I think it's important to realize that that passion is out there. Um, last point I want to make is sometimes organizations get the feeling, and I respectfully want to tell you that all of us on our committee know it's not an easy job to be a council member. And uh, many of us uh, uh, really understand maybe more workings of it than others, but uh, the, the Friends of the Cascade bridge as an organization want to make sure that we are not going us versus you as in the community versus the city if we're going to do this and we can get your approval and we move forward uh, we want to do it jointly as uh, cooperation with each other and just explore avenues and until we do that i don't think we can we can effectively find those revenue revenue resources without being conflictual. So that's why we are asking for that committee to be formed. <clears throat> so in summary, what we are asking for is to form a joint committee with the appropriate local organizations and concerned citizens with the objective of being able to cross Main Street at the Cascade Ravine on a pedestrian and vehicular bridge. Now, with that said, Terry is here and she's been very involved. Lisa's been very involved we can discuss if we want to in tonight or if it's not appropriate or would you rather do it through another form uh the findings that we have we've also uh, obviously uh, we have i i have and i'm sure my uh the other people behind me have read the impact 7g uh, that the city has and i think it was pretty clear there that uh, you know it's a very favorable thing to have a bridge there uh, but anyway we can uh, field questions and i may have to defer to terry or Charlie or Lisa sure I well I watched the present the presentation on building bridges I wasn't there but I did watch it uh, afterwards so I don't really have any concerns or questions there speaking for myself I, I don't have a problem forming a joint committee I'd like to somewhat limit the size because you know they can kind of get unwieldy yes um, absolutely so I, I you know for myself I think that would be a great idea to, to discuss the, the first thing you got to get to the point is you replacing it or rebuilding it um, you know, I have my firm belief what I think is a smart thing for us to do, but I'm willing to at least discuss that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know how does council feel on that. And we would need to get Mr. Rinker and Mr. I, I thought <coughs> Kreitzer was going to be here, but he's late with work, so sure. I'd get, have to get their opinions. Too. I, I did talk to Matt a little bit, and I think okay. you know feels that he's agreeable to something like this if it can be done. Uh, I will uh, speak, and then Terry certainly can, or Lisa can. I think our committee has come to the, or the Friends of the Cascade Bridge has kind of come to the conclusion that we want a bridge. All right, now let's just figure out whether we're going to restore the thing or build a new one. Because mm -hmm. I think we both, we all at one time kind of like, let's restore that bridge. But we, we, we've kind of come to that conclusion that that may not be the smartest thing or the most feasible thing to do uh, in versus a brand new bridge. So we are open. Okay. That was my only real concern, Dwight, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, because you know, the 7G impact would show uh, that there was a desire again to replace the bridge, but also not really to rehab it. Mm -hmm. um, as much as as much as I miss MacArthur Bridge, I really don't miss it when I'm going over the Great River Bridge. And I, I know that seems like a harsh stance for 
preservation, but I think uh, part of the plan that, that uh, Jesse Howell, our engineer, was putting together is some optional uses of pieces of Cascade, which could be brilliant mm -hmm. in our parks. You bet. So. You bet. And certainly, uh, Terry has been very, very involved in pushing this hard. And Lisa is part of the, and Lisa, don't let me misstate this, the Mrs. Great I, River I, Road. I'm Des Moines County's commission. I'm going to stand up. I am yeah, you need representative to come. from Des Moines County. I'm a, a member of the Iowa Mississippi River Parkway. We're 10 commissioners strong, 10 states borough. I just got back from LeClaire, Iowa today with six commissioners. I had 10 states on the line because we had a national meeting. And they said, where do we sign the dotted line? Where do we send the letter? The Great River Road impacts Burlington, whether you like it or not. The only thing that we ask as commissioners from the 10 states is that bridge go across the ravine where it is. And it's a driving bridge as well as a pedestrian bridge. There's funding now coming from the National, um, National Department of Transportation. The Great River Road is just being looked at very seriously for becoming a national byway. The national byway will have the same funding as Route, Route 66 going in California. Um, up to about 10 years ago, we had funding coming in from the state of Iowa, um, and that pipeline has worn off. You know, is, is a lot of funds have been cut. But um, they're very looking very seriously right now on the national federal level of funding it back. Um, they just haven't put the funds back in. But um, the Great River Road is heritage, and I think you have to build for the future. Um, it's not going to be our generation. We're all getting up there, I hate to say. It's going to be the future people. I walk Cascade, I walk Crapa Park every morning at 6 o'clock. The number of people that are in the park, that were in the park when we were all working from home, the kids were out there, there was a disc golf tournament in Crapa Park. That is the lifeline of our community. And you're going to have Viking cruise ships that are going to be coming. They just were on a conference call today. They're coming to Burlington, Iowa. Wouldn't it be cool to have a, be able to have a tour? Now, they're going to bring their buses just like all the American queens and so forth. But they are going to be at our doorstep in 2022. Um, you know, it's international. He had, I've had five young men from Taiwan and China. They remember Burlington, Iowa. And they're going to be the ones that are going to be coming back. They're going to be coming back. Frank will be coming back from China. James and Kevin. They're got, they're, you've, got to, you've got to think about the new future. And, you know, no, we can't do it in 90 days like my grandfather. But I think 2022 is a pretty realistic and there's funding from the, um, the Park Service. There's a lot of grants. And our pilot, who is our head of our 10 states, Terry McCullough, was just on a conference call. Arkansas has built five bridges with public money and with other things. Jim asked the question today, or a question the other day, which I researched today, about funding that if you could fundraise and raise money while a bridge is on the National Register. You can. I got the blessing from the Iowa Historical Center. Paula Moy Moyers called me today. She sits on the committee to decide if the bridge gets taken off the National Register. They have a vote. She has the vote. She told me that 106, Section 106 through the Iowa DOT and the DOTs has all the stipulations, but you can raise money whether it's a dollar coming in from, from, uh, from the DOT federal money or if it's all public money. So there's no stipulation. She said, also, if you can prove that the bridge needs to be replaced and, and not restored, then they will give you your blessing to get it off the bridge. The only question that the DOT had to me today is Craig asked me if we knew the demolition cost. The last bridge that Sabula did was not that significant, but he said your project will be probably a little bit more pricier. So he said that will kind of interfere on your deal. Another thing the commissioners asked, 
They said, I don't think Burlington, Iowa, like a lot of cities, builds in costs for maintenance, keeping up the bridge to last 100 years. So they suggested that if we're going out for funding and everything, that we build in enough money for maintenance so the city can maintain the bridge. Because the worst thing we don't want to get, build is a bridge and then have it go down within 15 years. I mean, it needs to be properly maintained. And I think sometimes a lot of cities pay Peter and Rob Paul mm -hmm. to, get, to get funding. Oh, we'll take it from them, just like you told me tonight. Oh, well, we'll take it from you know, this to get this. That's one reason why the Great River Partnership and, uh, and the Great River Partnership and the Mississippi River Parkway might want to make sure that the money is there funded the bridge to make it sure it lasts. And as I'm going to turn it over to Terry. I've already said my piece. Thank you. Hello, Terry Ariano, 2800 South Main Street. And I can just support what Dwight said that we are not only friends of Cascade Bridge, but we are friends of the city council and we want to be a support. We've said that from the very beginning. Um, we never did get a survey on what it would cost to rehabilitate the bridge in years past. And we were led to believe it would be maybe half of building a new bridge. Well, when we got our final numbers, that's not what it turned out to be. It turned out to be just about the same cost as putting in a new bridge. So as Dwight said, and I support his comments, that we're not here saying we want that bridge. We want to get across the ravine is what we want. I personally want that because I live on that side of the bridge. So with this committee, and I do some more support it, I do believe we're going to be able to find funding outside and then put our time and our energy into finding funding above and beyond what the council or any of the, um, the people that work here can do. So thank you. Thanks, Terry. Anybody have any questions? I'll get with you and kind of give you an update here a little bit, Sorry. unless you have some. That's all right. I just commend all their efforts. I mean, I can just feel the passion that you guys have in the room, and you've been working on this for a long time. So I know in my heart you will be successful. I do. I wish Lisa would get a little more passionate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Ten yeah. today on the phone saying, let's get this thing done. So our, our, one of our big issues is still going to be the SHPO clearance, though, right? And we're, we have any idea how long that's good? Because they are a level of government onto themselves. Do we have any idea of where we're at with that after the 7G? Hmm? So uh, the biggest thing would be starting a project. SHPO will not give you a green light on doing anything with the bridge until you have a project initiated. And so some of that can be started by accepting uh, the city br uh, bridge funds that we've turned down in the past from the DOT. That could start the SHPO review, uh, you know, it, whether you're building a new one or, or uh, right. rehabbing the I other one. You. you can start a project at that point and then you'd have to, you know, you'd have to go through a process of hired engineering to get that started. But you could start the environmental processes and what SHPO, SHPO can take six months to a year sometimes on that, uh, that type of review. I think that if what we've done in the last year should help us move that process forward quicker. Forward quicker, okay. And then of course, you know, the, um, I guess my, my only thing would be we have to, because also came out of that 7Gs, a lot of people aren't wanting to pay for it. So we'd have to do that in such a manner, depending on what our fundraising is, or your fundraising would be, we'd have to do it in such a manner that it doesn't totally wreck our city finances. So just that would be an expectation. So, Jim, did you have anything you wanted to add? Is there any kind of problem with the public-private group working in this, since we're all somewhat newbies on the council? No. If I think that you mentioned CHIPO on a state level. The same thing on a, on a federal level for federal funds. It's a, you mentioned the sec, section 107. I can't, uh, I don't remember the number. 106. 106. So that, that process is one until you have federal funds obligated, they won't let you start the process. And um, the process, from what we understand, can, I mean, the, one, the, sec, the 106 process can take one to two years. I mean, we, again, the work that we have done. Uh, in the last six months to a year helps 
but it's still, we still can't do an official kickoff until there's funds in place that have been awarded. Awarded, okay. Um, now, that's not a, an issue in terms of, I mean, if we, if we can get, if we had funds, we could move forward and get started on that piece. Now, the, the difference is, what, what are we doing? What are we building? Is it a $5 million bridge that we're looking at mm -hmm. as an overall project? If we have a million dollars of federal funds, we have to have the other $4 million that we fund. If we have a way to get some of that raised well, through different yeah, sources. I've been told by an entity who has some expertise in building bridges, and, and he built one in Burlington. And maybe Charlie can inject. He said there's several companies that would come to the table um, for a project like this. And we can pretty much, Charlie, why don't you talk? Because you, you, you've got more of a handle of what they told you. Charlie Walsh, 1619 River Street. Uh, the person I talked to was uh, Dave Duke, who built the Great River Bridge, along with the Railroad Bridge. bridge. And he said that uh, the best thing to do is not only get an engineering company, but get a design company and have them both work together and felt that there were a lot of companies out there that not only do the design but do the construction okay. because if you do the construction and they're the ones doing the design that's going to be the path they're going to take mm -hmm. and he said that wouldn't probably be the best for as he calls it, small bridge. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Charlie. Some of that, I mean, kind of, we have to, so typically we use, an, we go through an RFP process on an engineering firm for, to, or architect to do the design work. Um, most federal funds require you to go through an RFP to do the, the, that design process uh, after you have been awarded funds um, and then to bid out a project. I was, and I don't know what federal rules require for doing some, doing, uh, con de having the person who does design then do the actual construction. Iowa rules don't allow you to do that. You, uh, Iowa law says that you have to go through have one person do the design, then bid out uh, the different components. Now, we've done something that's just sort of a, an offshoot from that that is kind of towards the design build in the past. We used, uh, uh, not S&G, doggone it, Carl A. Nelson to do the, P the PD building. That was one where we had a, a, constru a construction manager. Uh, they still bid out everything. They couldn't do any of the construction stuff. I know that there was a, a, a law change this year, but I, in regards to construction manager uh, type activities, I don't know if we can go to where we have the person do a design work and then do the building. So le legally, I don't think we're allowed to do that. But, um, but, I mean, we can still see what we can accomplish within that framework to try to get something done. Um, Cost-wise, uh, I don't know what timing you can look at doing this. Uh, you're, I know you'd love to see this built by 2022. Uh, we have a process. Uh, we need to, I, well, we need, would need to work it within our, our finances, whatever our portion was, and figure out where we can borrow. Um, we figure that we typically would have a year design, um, possibly a year to get approval to from environmental. Some of that can go on. Environmental's going to be tough with the ravines. There, you're going to have to do a couple of different things. You you may get it get to where you can go out for for start construction in in a little under two years. I'm not positive that you could, but we might be able to get that all worked out to get done sooner than that. What you're going to get into is whether you can finance it or not. Right. Um, and that. 
at, until we know what our costs are, I can't really say a whole lot about that. But likely, if we're borrowing two to four million dollars that we're going to have to put into it, we're going to see e either some of our street projects have to be delayed um, one or two years. Um, you may see that you're talking, depending on the again the amount uh, and what. If you're not trying, if you're trying not to eliminate any of the other projects that are on there, uh, possibly not seeing or seeing an impact to what our tax rates are. Now, again, we had looked at our tax levy is currently for debt service right now is three dollars and eighty cents per thousand. Um, we were look, we had raised that from three dollars to three eighty back in 2012, or well, it's the 2013 budget year. Uh, we were uh, looking to try to get that back down. Uh, when Travis made the presentation in January or, more, or February, he looked at reducing that down to 340 per thousand, uh, possibly in the 2023-ish time frame, and then hopefully back to three uh, at some point in the future. Uh, again, when we raised it 80 cents, it was to take care of the backloaded debt that we had and the deficits that we had. And we had talked back in 2012 that we were going to go be able to go back down to the, the $3. Um, this is likely going to, if you try to work this in, uh, the more compressed that you get projects, the, the harder it will be to see that debt schedule come back down. So just know that as you have these discussions, you have those impacts that you're going to have to weigh out. How do you make the projects all mesh together? And how do you make the funding? And it's not that it can't be done. It's just that you are likely to see uh, you're, you're having to move around projects and poten you know, potentially delay some of the Absolutely. other work that you want to do. OK. Anybody have any more questions on that? Um, Dwight, what? Uh, let me let's I need to get Mr. Rank or Mr. Kreitzer's opinion, but then once we maybe we can get back with you and sure. decide to do that. Okay. Yeah, that'd be fine. Group. Okay. Yeah. Terry or Lisa, yeah. Yeah, this is a work it, session, so we're it, not really committing I, to anything, nope, but I, I, you, we, you we, have we, a sympathetic ear and hopefully we have We it. understand it. As a matter of fact, as I sat there and listened to all the good points, yeah. Lisa, Charlie, Terry, Jim, all those inputs, that's where I'm at is I, I walk away going, Oh, Where's all this fraction coming from? Let's put it together and get a whole number mm -hmm. here someplace and move forward. You know, and then maybe we have to sit back and go, Oof, this ain't going to work very well. Let's do something different. But we, we aren't even at the point. We've got to push forward, I think, if we're going to have that bridge. Thank you. OK. Uh, next up would be appointments. We have a couple out there that will be on the consent. Next, next up will be a couple of appointments on the consent. Looks like Library, Library Board of Trustees uh, Commission Member Bill L. has resigned. Uh, Tanisha Chupa has ex expressed an interest in serving on this committee. Uh, it's requested the council review her application and consider appointing her, so we'll decide that. And again, on the Renewable Energy Committee, uh, Commission Member Judy Smithson Hilkin has resigned uh, this month. And uh, again, Tanisha Chupa has expressed an interest in serving. So. Uh, we'll look at both those things and vote on that as well. Is there anything else from staff? We'll go around the horn, Mr. Tislin? No, Mr. Fitting? Chief Kramer? No. Sorry, let's no. pause for a minute. Because I always just say Chief. Chief Trexel? No. Uh, Nick? Almost a minute. One of these days. Sorry. I had sent an email uh, the end of last week. Um, I know that there's been some issues with the DOTs function of the Great River Bridge on closing down the other side of Main Street. Uh, we're talking with them to try and get them to open uh, the eastbound exit for Main Street. I know that you've seen a lot of truck traffic on Division. Uh, after seeing them all through on Sunnyside and Columbia and North Hill, we had to pick a place to send them. It seemed the most logical um, and, the, and the one that can actually handle the truck load. Um, beyond that, I was informed last week that they were removing the conduit line to our decorative lighting. Um, we didn't know this, um, but after further conversation that I found out today, they are going to replace that line, uh, the conduit line and the lines for the decorative lighting. Um, 
the reason why I sent the email is I didn't know what the future of those decorative lights were going to be if that conduit line was not to be replaced. Okay. Um, I know that it was going to be kind of expensive, and if we were going to have to take on that burden, um, I didn't know what that looked like. But it looks like they're going to replace it for us. Um, I know that the decorative lights have seen some damage from salt spray and you know other vandalism type function i know that there's a desire and there's a group fundraising or has been fundraising to do something there but um what the dot has done will not limit us from doing anything in the future there so yeah. i just wanted to bring that together because i had started that conversation um and kind of wanted to let you know where, where things were good but that's nice that's to it. hear that the line's going to be replaced so that's fine annette did you have anything Mr. Fernow, do you have anything? I'm going to make Chief Trexel come up. He received a designation uh, this month and uh, kind of wanted to let him tell you about it. I think it's a big deal. He's put a lot of time and effort into obtaining this over the last two years, and maybe you can kind of explain a little bit about that too. Thank you, Jim. So the, the designation is called the Chief Fire Officer designation. It's through an accreditation organization. And so first, thanks to Jim for recognizing that. And he also assisted in my application. And like he said, I, I really in earnest started it about two years ago. Before that, I had kind of got the application. It's like 50 pages long. I looked through there and thought, well, there's really no sense in doing this because I don't have the stuff that they're looking for. So I had to really kind of work on some things over I don't know, period of years in order to apply. So it's different than the executive fire officer. I don't know if you remember that a couple of years mm -hmm. ago, I obtained that. And that's like training and education. Now you just, you take classes, you do research papers, you, you pass the class, you get the certification. Where this is more of a professional development program where they look at all, you, they look at your training and education, but they also look at uh, just the, your experience, your uh, professional contributions, your community service. Uh, then they also look at what you plan on doing in your career. So you have to write up some goals and stuff. So every three years you get reviewed again and they look at your goals. You have to uh, agree to a, a code of ethics uh, for fire chiefs. So it's kind of a way, truthfully, a, a fire chief can get, I don't know, say stagnant or in a lull or whatever. There's just a way for me to you know, keep progressing myself and then also in turn hopefully helping the, the fire department move ahead and also encourage some other people on the department to do the same thing. So um, it is a, it's a tough thing to do, but it keeps me on my toes. So, Well, congratulations to you. Uh, that, that sounds like a heck of an achievement. And uh, I will tell you personally, I'll say in front of the group, that I have personally enjoyed watching your leadership of your crew in your department at the vision planning sessions where you have all your people involved and are engaged, and that is true leadership. So thank you for your service to our yeah. our community, Chief. Yeah. Thank you. And Chief, and if I could add to that, you are somebody I definitely admire, and if one of your goals is to continue to be part of Burlington and stay here, that would make me extremely happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was kidding with Jim when he brought it up about why would you do that, and I said, well, it's really good on a resume, but that's really not <laughs> at all why, why I did that, so I don't plan on going anywhere. Um, and while I'm up here, can I just talk about recruit testing for a minute? Yes, we got We got one more week left of the uh, physical agility testing, but we're the whole department's super excited about the recruit class that we have so far. I mean, they still have some testing to go, but we have somewhere around 25 applicants, and and I'm pretty sure when we're done, we're going to have a list of at least 20, and we'll have really hard decisions to make on who to hire, which is a great. Not because, you know, like, who, you know, we don't want any of these. No, it's going to be like, the, we have some awesome, really awesome candidates uh, that have tested. So it's been really fun the last three weekends to have them come out and do physical agility testing and get to kind of meet them. And then uh, after that, we'll do interviews uh, following the week of the 7th of August. So hopefully in September, we'll have a list and get to hire them. So. Like, narrowing the list down, challenging to a foot race. And the one that can beat you. Yeah. <laughs> they're all, they're all a lot younger than, than me, so. <laughs> <laughs> we might have a little higher criteria than yeah. that. So. Yeah. Well, congratulations, so. Chief. All right, thank you. Congratulations. You Thanks for, for doing that. Mr. Furneaux, you have anything else? Okay. Around the horn, Bill? I'm good. Robert? 
uh, apologize for my tardiness. Uh, I've been at it since 3 o'clock this morning, and I just ran out of time. Or gets in the way. Linda? Make sure and hit Farmer's Market this Thursday. I went and it was a lot of fun. I, I felt safe. I wore my mask. A lot of fresh produce available. So be sure and check it out. All right. Um, I don't have anything. So uh, thank you for your time and, and effort. And punch the button. Thank you, everybody. See you Monday.